Hello and welcome to DevOps interview questions and answer part one. In this video, let us see what kind of questions will appear, understand the motivation behind these questions, and then answer it how you should present it in the interview if you come across this question. The first question is coming from the domain AWS Cloud, and the question is explain the need to use CloudTrail in AWS. Do you use it in your current project? And what are some pros and cons of using CloudTrail? But if you observe the question properly, they are only asking you the cons and they are not asking you the pros. Maybe when you explain what is CloudTrail and how your project is using CloudTrail, you're already saying the pros. That is why they are discussing about the cons. They want to know what are some of the negative points in CloudTrail, which is something that one should consider before selecting CloudTrail. If you have been uh, into the world of DevOps, then this answer is very easy. That is, what is CloudTrail? And I'm pretty much sure all of you watching this video are aware of what is CloudTrail. But no worries, I will explain you what is CloudTrail first. In the AWS environment, that is AWS Cloud, you can achieve the result of spinning up resources in many ways. So you can use the console to spin up resources, right? You can use the SDK to spin up the resources. You can use the CLI to spin up the resources. There are multiple ways in which you can spin up the resources. What is a resource? Resource is nothing but EC2, RDS, etc. Now the question that appears is, how will you perform an audit? What is an audit? Audit is nothing but who did what? If you want to perform this particular action, then it is not easy. Instead of relying on a third party software, AWS has developed its own service, which is CloudTrail. CloudTrail, the main feature of CloudTrail is to log every action. To log every action. But to log every action of what? To log every action performed inside the AWS account. AWS account. So here you can exactly know which user performed a stop on an EC2 instance or which user enabled a particular service. All of this information you can come to know from CloudTrail. If you are using AWS free tier, then CloudTrail will not cost you anything. But the information that the CloudTrail collects, the information that the CloudTrail collects is only active for 90 days. After this, you lose this piece of information. The problem with this is, if you are a very big organization and if you want to perform the audit, then you need data that is more than 90 days. Here, to achieve this particular feature, there is another uh, service that you can enable inside CloudTrail that is to enable the tracking events. In this case, what will happen is the data will be dumped to S3 bucket automatically by CloudTrail. This is expensive. This way is expensive. Now, let us take a small company that has 250 engineers, not much. Now, if they perform some kind of activity on AWS Cloud, then it is logging so many information and all this data will be collected and you will have to move to S3. This is the con of using CloudTrail. But this is a very big con if you only have a lot of people using AWS account. If not, this is not a big con, okay? So the con of using CloudTrail in a very big organization is that it will quickly become expensive if you enable it for every event. I hope this makes sense. Okay, so how would you present this piece of information in the interview? This is how you can present it. Quote, AWS CloudTrail is responsible for tracking all the events inside our AWS account. Yes, in my given project that I am supporting and working, we are using AWS CloudTrail 
to monitor every action that is performed on our AWS account. One of the cons that I believe with using AWS CloudTrail is that it will become quickly expensive if we start logging all different kinds of information regarding the activities performed on our account. This is one of the cons that I can think about CloudTrail, unquote. This is how you can present this particular answer in the interview. I hope it is clear. Let us see the next question. The next question is coming from the domain Docker. What is the question? The question is, you have a Docker host, let us say EC2 instance, which contains six Docker containers running. If you restart the EC2 instance, will the Docker containers be restart automatically? It's a very practical question. So let us try to first understand the question, okay? We have an EC2 instance. Inside this, we have Docker daemon, right? Docker daemon is present. Now this Docker daemon is responsible for running the Docker process. Here we have six containers. So if the EC2 instance is restarted, if the EC2 instance is restarted, will this container restart automatically or not? That is the question. What is your answer? Think about it. The answer is pretty simple. There is an extension in the Docker when you run a Docker command and the extension is nothing but docker run hyphen hyphen restart always. So if you pass always as a sub command to your Docker run command, then if the image or the container is stopped, it will automatically restart. In fact, hyphen hyphen restart takes always as a parameter, on failure as a parameter, unless stopped as a parameter, no, which is a default parameter. So if you just do which is a docker run image underscore name, let us say, then if the container, if the container, if the container is stopped, then then it will not restart. It will not restart. Okay. The reason is here the no is set. That is the default restart is set. On failure is nothing but restart the container. Restart the container if you encounter any issues when you are spinning up the container. That is on failure. Always is something I just explained. That is if Docker sees that a container that is spun up with always as a sub command that has been passed and the container is stopped, then it is going to start the container automatically. Unless stopped is similar to always, except that when the container is stopped manually, it is not restarted even when the Docker daemon is restarted, okay? Now that we know this information, so what exactly happens in the use case? The use case in which that I the question is asked, that is in the EC2 instance, you have six containers. Will they be restarted? Now, the answer to this is, it depends on how the Docker container was started. What was the parameter supplied for this container? That is the hyphen hyphen restart subcommand supplied to the six container. Now, if nothing is supplied, default is no, resulting in a resulting in a fact that no container shall be restarted okay based on all of this information how would you present the answer in the interview this is how you can present the answer in the interview quote based on the question that has been asked i believe i need to know a bit more information but let me assume something and give the answer when we run a docker run command I remember that there is hyphen hyphen restart subcommand that is present. This hyphen hyphen restart subcommand is responsible to monitor the container status. By default, it is no. So if all the six containers are run with the default no, then obviously all of these six containers shall not be restarted if the EC2 machine is restarted. But if the hyphen hyphen restart 
is equal to always. In this case, if the EC2 instance is restarted, then all the six containers shall also be restarted by our Docker daemon. Unquote. This is how you can present this particular answer in the interview. I hope this video was helpful and you understood the concept behind the question and also how to present the answer in the interview. Speak to you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.